Hi, and welcome to Sunday Night Chart. We take a look at the charts to help you with the trading week ahead. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and just keep in mind that, to, that in the chart show, the momentum algorithms are based on a proprietary model I've been working on for years, for years, and I finally think they're dialed in. Let's look at the trend indicators uh, that you'll see in the momentum and price screen. Short term is 90, intermediate 21, long term 50, ultra long term 100, moving averages. These are the lines on my trade screen 50 day in green, 100 day in blue, 200 day in tan. Price versus momentum. Now, price is a general direction prices are headed. This is this is pretty easy to figure out just by looking at the chart. Uh, momentum, though, is the rate of change. And a bullish indicator for both is positive and a bearish indicator for both is negative. Momentum often but not always leads price. Uh, technical analysis attempts to determine where buyers and sellers are at. Resistance is a level buyers can't break and support is a level sellers can't break. Or resistance is where sellers are at and support is where buyers are at. Keep in mind, technical analysis does not predict price. It can be used to determine the risk of a trade, help with time in trade, and provide direction to the path of least resistance. Charting offers possibilities, not probabilities, and not certainties. Let's get into the S&P 500. Not much change as we would expect because what did we see this past week? Lots of bullishness on stimulus and vaccine optimism. So price remains bullish across the board. No changes there. We did see a small flip on the intermediate term to bearish member momentum is supposed to lead price. And I think we've, again, I've been working on this for years. So I've, I believe it is more dialed in now than it has been in the past. What do we see on the S&P 500 to break above this large megaphone pattern going back uh, more than two years? This would be a bullish breakout if this holds true. The question is, can the bulls hang on? Momentum is saying prices are slowing. Bulls need all kinds of more good news to keep this ball rolling. Although, the other side is, prices have been rallying on bad news. So maybe they just need news to keep the bullish of <laughs> the bull market going. NASDAQ 100, same, almost same picture here. No change over last week. Price remains bullish across the board. Momentum um, bearish on the short term and long term. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. I mean, we're going to see similar pictures. The, the, this is a bull market. People are buying regardless of news. Good news, bad news. You know, they, people are telling me, ah, the market is forward looking by at least 18 months. It's probably forward looking by a decade if you really want to be accurate about where earnings and value in price stock prices are at it's pricing things way way ahead but look the markets are never forward looking because they never see recessions they didn't see the march uh, uh, liquidity event and they're not going to see the coming insolvency event but nevertheless the nasdaq remains bullish sitting near all-time highs as people continue to pile into tech stocks, what did we see last week in the data? The foreign investors have been big buyers of tech stocks. So there you go. More bullish news on the NASDAQ. And, and there's no signs of an in immediate reversal. How about small caps? People are super bullish on the U.S. economy. And uh, there's really no, not much to say other than, yeah, they're bullish on the U.S. economy. People are massively buying into U.S. small caps, thinking there's going to be a huge economic recovery when, in fact, the stock prices has more than actually priced in a recovery because if you go out a couple years, you see that, well, the recovery of the stock market is telling us the economy is going to be better than it was at its peak back in 2018. Well, it's going to take time for this market to heal. It's going, or the economy to heal. The market says no. How about the energy sector? Super, you know, you look at this bullish screens across the board on the energy sector. Again, this is all based on a huge economic rebound, something you normally don't get with 20.6 million people unemployed in the notion that all these people are going to come right back to work. Well, that's uh, not exactly true. Uh, we see did hit resistance on the XLE at $42 a share, uh, right where it hit resistance from its island gap reversal back in June. And at this moment, if you are bullish on the energy sector, what you would like to see, you have a cross over the 50 day, you'd like a reconfirmation, you've got the 200 day, 100 day and 50 day moving averages sitting right down here around $34 to $35 a share on XLE. You'd actually want to see this, you want to see this roll over, tag these, hold and suggest that a new bull market rally in the energy sector is beginning. That's what you want to see. 
You know, some people think that the things just need to go up, up, up. Actually, you want to have a confirmation against a moving average on an upward direction. How about financial stocks? Now, this picture will probably change on Monday uh, only because what do we find out uh, Friday after market close that the Fed is now going to allow banks to buy their shares back. JP Morgan Chase already announced a 30 billion uh, re share repurchase for the first quarter. Nothing so far from the other banks, although it is likely expected that they will too. So what happened in the XLF? Well, let's take a look and you can see it was running into resistance right back now, not far off of its two year highs uh, going back to say October of 20, uh, end of October, 2019. But what happened in after hours trading on that JP Morgan news, boom, prices jumped up all the way to $29 a share on XLF. Uh, so pointing it again, right back near its all time highs up here at 31 as for some reason, 26.6 million people are gonna go out and borrow a lot of money. Not likely, that's the problem with this. The market is just building in expectations that uh, aren't gonna happen, but that's what that's how bull markets work. And all of a sudden no one's interested in utilities. You can see momentum is bearish across the board. Price is flipping bearish, ultra, I mean, almost bearish completely. Let's just, we don't normally look at the utilities, but let's take a look what's going on there. Uh, here you are, XLU. Certainly looks like a topping pattern. Support on XLU is down here. It's gonna be right in the $60 to $61 range. But so far, this is kind of a, this is a bearish picture on the utilities. How about we move on to the industrials? Of course, industrials are gonna mimic your major uh, indices. So bullish across the board, no change on anything price or momentum, suggesting that you know everyone again is bold up on the US economy in a big way. How about gold miners? Now you'd think uh, with a stimulus bill coming uh, this weekend, potentially that gold miners would be taking off. The momentum screens look bearish, uh, price, uh, term uh, bullish on the intermediate term, but no major change here. Let's look at GDX and in insolvency events, you're going to see GDX head lower. It is trying to break through this or did break through this kind of uh, bullish flag, but can it hold it? Didn't hold its 50 day moving average. Again, the overall picture for GDX isn't all of that bullish at this point. Uh, you can make a case that is starting to you know potentially bottom out here, but the broad picture is bearish. How about we move on to emerging markets? No major change here. Uh, we've got price bullish across the board. Momentum just flipped over bearish on the intermediate term on the EEM. Let's take a quick look at where it's at. It looks like it's stalling out around $51 a share. If you think that is cheap on the EEM, you're talking the uh, fourth highest price of EEM in history. The highest set back during uh, before the dot uh, the uh, great financial crisis, and then just shortly after it, before it melted down, and then you've got of course here back in January of eighteen, both um, prices at these levels have always signaled a major reversal in the emerging market space. We'll see what happens if momentum here is predicting that perhaps this is the top of emer EEM. How about TLT? Uh, only the Bond King's favorite here, uh, no one else's because it's seen heavy selling pressure since August. We have price bearish across the board, no surprise there, but momentum is starting to turn bullish, even on the longer term scale here. Uh, this is pretty interesting because it looks like TLT is starting to bottom out. And you can see it's just been seeing heavy selling pressure since August that with no sign of stopping. And despite massive selling, it is starting to bottom. You can notice it did not get past uh, its November of last year or, or yeah, November or December uh, lows from, la from this year, not last year, what am I thinking? This is this year, last year would be way back there. And what do we see? Moving averages are starting to bottom. Price is starting to hold here despite aggressive selling. We'll cover the speculative position on Monday. But overall, what this starts to look like is a bottom. Is it there? Will it, could it retouch its November, December lows? Possibly in the next week? Absolutely anything is possible. You're seeing this rolling over. But overall, you're starting to see a bottom. Momentum is starting to signal that, hey, this change in price on TLT is coming to an end. How about the high yield bond market? No major change here. You, again, you're gonna see a mimic of the equity market here because people love high yield bonds. Uh, they tend to have price appreciation when equity prices are headed up. 
And people are willing to take the risk because they don't think the default risk is there when the economy is doing well. High yield bonds are back almost near their all time. Well, these aren't their all time highs, are they? No. Back near their 2018, 2019 and 2018 price highs. One thing I like to point out for those who do like high yield bonds, the risk in this sector is crazy. Uh, if you look at what the people are getting, they're getting a sub 5% dividend yield to take a massive amount of risk on the economy. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but everyone is bulled up. That's what bull markets are. But people just buy things, even if they're overvalued, because they think they're going higher without any regard that they could go lower. How about gold futures? Bearish momentum across the board. Only price remains short-term in the uh, bullish category. Otherwise, let's take a look at gold. And we see that it has rebounded a little bit, but overall, the trend picture in gold isn't that great. I know a lot of people are saying this is back, you know, this was it. This was the bottom to buy, and now it's headed up. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. You know, if the dollar starts to rally, it's going to be a big, big problem for gold. Big problem for gold. And how about silver? Look at that. Completely bullish across the board. Uh, that's kind of interesting. You don't normally see the two so far apart. Uh, one bullish, one bearish. But anyway, silver looks like it's starting to break up and out. It's got resistance sitting up here at 26. And it really didn't even come down and find support at any major level. Just continue to find buyers where buyers were previously at. I kind of thought it was, you know, we saw the momentum was headed lower, but now people are back on buying silver, looking, they need to really break through this 27 to $28 price level for the bulls to be convicted about this move. But everything is green on silver. How about the dollar? We're starting to see momentum now flip to bullish on the short and intermediate term. The, what the one thing the market can't handle and is not prepared for, and that is a, a rising dollar. Otherwise, price is bearish. Obviously, momentum on the longer terms are bearish. But could this be the bottom finally in the dollar coming down here? Momentum saying, "Hey, it's the the rate of drop of uh, price decline is slowing down fast." Could that signal it? We'll see. How about we wrap up with Bitcoin? Where is Bitcoin future? So not a lot to say here. Well, I've got a, a few small comments. You've got a bull market breakout above pr all time price highs. That tells you this thing is going to infinity and beyond. From a price perspective, you see a small consolidation pattern. Uh, if you're bullish on Bitcoin, this shouldn't really bother you. And from what I understand from Bitcoin bulls, well, it doesn't. They are very bullish and uh, they ought to be. They got the all-time price high they were looking for. We'll see you on Monday for the Macro Show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. The content of this video is provides educational information only is not intended to provide investment or other advice. Drills not to be construed as recognition or solicitation by our selling security, financial product, instrument, or to participate in any particular training strategy. This video was prepared by Steve Van Miro. Personal capacity opinions expressed in the field that I'm no, owned and do not reflect the view of Alice Financial Advisors, Inc. or Steve Van Meter Financial.